I hope it's going. All right, we talked about uh, life uh, at the beginning, and um, so we are going to, yeah, the first, the first chapter is kind of just an introduction. This is actually from the book that I'm going to use. I'm not going to pass them out, but the um, reason I use it is because it has um, great, easy-to-read informational type stuff uh, along with it, and it is not design-based. It is very much evolution-based, but even as they talk about evolution, it's actually easier to explain it with design. They actually make it make the case themselves for design, but then they call it um, they call it evolution. Say it's all just by chance, and that's uh, biology. And when you take biology in college, if you go to a secular uh, university, which you know, most of you will, um, and I went to a Bible college, but then I transferred and I got my degree from UNO. Uh, when you take your classes, uh, you're going to get a probably a different worldview. Maybe, maybe not. Depends on where you uh, go. Um, but biology is biology, but it's very different when if all life, us, animals, plants, bacteria, everything, was just random chance. It just happened to come along, and the class then is looking at where did it come from? They haven't got that figured out yet. They're still working on that. How did we get first life? Um, and we're not even really close to that. Uh, coming up with any kind of a reasonable, rational explanation for how we went from non-living to living. Uh, but from that point, let's say that it happened, how did we get to where we are? And that's an interesting progression. That's a, that would be worth studying. And, and um, I don't believe that's how we got here, but um, it would make for a good class, but it doesn't stop here. There's no reason to think that chance um, happens that we got to us and take a look around. This is as good as it's going to get. We're done. No, is that what direction is it going to go? And you can kind of see a um, science fiction movie where humans are now faced with the next, you know, I went from, they say, from the reptiles to the mammals and then the peak of the mammals, the humans, whatever is next, if it comes along, now humans have to try and hold their place there. I mean, can't forever, you can't fight science and evolution, but for right now, that would make a great series, some kind of superhero series. Can we take, can we at least hold off for a few generations this next biological wonder that's coming? I don't know, but where is it going? That would be the focus of biology. If we are here as a designed on purpose piece of life along with everything else, that's a completely different look at why we study life. So depending on, on how you look at it, biology can be different. I like this because they're gonna come at it from the, this is how we got here. And you can see the part that I like from there that it sure looks like uh, we're talking about design. Uh, so we're just going to go through, first of all, what does it mean that something is alive? Um, and, and some things have some characteristics of life, but not all of them, and uh, they can kind of fool you for a while. I take my uh, dog on a walk, and there is nothing um, that he's more interested in the last couple of weeks than cicadas cicadas as they come out of the trees and they're letting their wings dry and they're sitting on the road our neighborhood doesn't have very many sidewalks so we're walking on the street um, and he's looking around because that's his favorite snack right now is eating freshly hatched cicadas especially if they fly up a little bit and are buzzing when it is kind of like a party in his mouth but he's looking for them and if a leaf blows across the road He's sure that that's one of those cicadas scattering because it has part of the um, characteristics of life. It's moving. And so he has to check it out. Um, so sometimes we have to look at it. There are some characteristics, though, that all life has in common. As we go through this, red means write it. 
Uh, just the black. Now the first one, the headings are, are red, so you don't have to, I mean, you go ahead and write all of it, uh, but some of it doesn't mean the black isn't important, but it, it means that, yeah, yeah, we can, it's just kind of leading up. I'm, I'm gonna try and abridge it for you. Okay, so the first thing, uh, life, living things are organized. Some of them don't go past the first bullet point here, cell. We looked at some of those under the microscope. So everything is, starts with cell. If it's not made of a cell, it's not alive. Um, that's the smallest, most basic, and I agree with that, but there's nothing basic about it. They like to think, the evolutionists, they like to think that, oh, we can find this cell, and this cell happened, we've got this primordial soup, and we have all the right nitrogen and carbon and oxygen and all this stuff in here and lightning hits it and we get a cell and the more they understand about the cell um, they realize this is really really complicated that would have to be uh, some really smart lightning to start it and, and so it is the most basic but it's not very basic and organisms may be unicellular one cell or they can be multicellular um, we looked at some on the microscope that were only one cell. You are somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 trillion cells. It is. And they thought, well, yeah, we started from this and we went to this. The problem with that is if you're only one cell, that one cell has to do everything to keep life going. In your body, you have a lot of cells that are actually simpler than an amoeba or whatever, because they only have to do one function. There's only one thing they have to do. The amoeba or the euglena, the, uh, so whatever protus, has to do everything inside that one cell. So the uh, evolutionist has a little bit more of a problem that oh, those are actually some of the more complicated cells rather than the ones that have kind of specialized and they only do one thing now they, they don't need as much stuff you get a bunch of cells working together and you kind of see the evolutionary track here that okay eventually you get some cells and you get them to work together and a bunch of them don't know the stimulus that would make that happen but if you got them working together then we have a tissue um, and uh, tissues are made up of similar Cells, uh, kind of like um, the muscle cells, and let's just pick an organ since uh, some of your uh, stomachs are working on snacks that you decided to store in there. Uh, and you got that stomach is made up of muscles, three different layers, so that it can squish this way, it can squish this way, and it can squish this way. So one, they take turn contracting and they mix it around. Just like if you're mixing something in a bag, you don't just squeeze the same thing. You're gonna squeeze it and you move it. And you got, so you're just kind of shaking it around. So you're just supposed to squeeze on You're ruining yeah. this. Oh, good. <laughs> Snack time is gonna be easier. You're gonna learn something the other yeah, day, they just in three different, but that's not the only type of tissue. You also have tissue that's on the inside that secretes the hydrochloric acid, it secretes some pepsin, um, some other enzymes that are gonna break down different types of food that you eat. Uh, if you eat protein, uh, some kind of um, I don't know, dairy or dairy substitute, um, it's gonna take something to break that protein down. If you're eating a veggie stick or a chips, or popcorn, that's carbohydrate, takes a different one, so they have to secrete. So you've got a bunch of different tissues. If you have those tissues all working together, we have an organ, we have the stomach. Stomach can't do anything for you all by itself. When the stomach is done with whatever you've eaten, it hasn't helped your body one little bit. If all you had was a stomach, it could digest all that food and it doesn't do anything, it just takes it apart. And actually only begins to take it apart it has to go somewhere else in the same system to get absorbed. And until it gets into your bloodstream, it doesn't do you any good. So 
Uh, you put a bunch of organs together and we can get the digestive system. And then if you put the organ systems together, usually there's one more down here, you get an organism. But this can be an organism all by itself as well. So there are those layers and they have, um, they have a couple of examples here on the top is the ant kingdom animalia on the bottom plantae uh, up here and they start from the very small molecules larger molecules like proteins or carbohydrates and they make up a cell cells working together make up a tissue tissues working together make up an organ organs working together make up an organ system and then uh, put all the systems together and you get an organism um, which in that case we would call a zebra up in Canada I got there and it was kind of funny because they say it British like and so it's a zebra because their last three letters are X Y and Z um, they, it is we say Z they say Z well no it's just different it's different so they, they think we're wrong and they think it sounds we and yeah yes we would say they're wrong. Um, plants are the same thing. You got a cell, and we'll talk about when we get to the cells the differences between an animal and a plant cell. Most of the things are the same. There's a few, like two or three differences that make them very different, but uh, most of the stuff is the same inside. You have tissues in here, uh, you have uh, an organ like the leaf, and then the two, they have stems and roots. Most of the times, it's shoots and roots are the two that they uh, use. And then you have the organism, in this case, a tree or a bush of some sort um, as it's going through. And I don't know if this is for them. It might be easier for you. I don't know what it's gonna do for them. I don't know how Apple does this. Evan, can you try, turn the lights off? Let's see what. I don't know, we'll see if that works or not. All right. Um, living things acquire material and energy. And so this is where the red, copy down the red stuff. So I can make it all red. <laughs> um, you can go, there's not a whole lot. Life can't be maintained without them. Most of them, if we skip down, are used to remain homeostatic. And uh, homeostasis means that we stay the same. For example, we can see if you're healthy because a healthy person has a very narrow very range stuff. that their, their temperature is in. So when you come into school, you stand in front of the screen and the normal temperature. Uh, and then you can come in, I did see, I've only seen once where it said it was too hot, and that's when Kaylee tried to bring coffee in. And, I think I got my coffee instead. Like and, and it is, yeah, I was not supposed to let her in, but. <laughs> I did it again. All right, wait. Do you want to copy the red stuff? Yes. Uh, but homeostasis, a lot of it, you don't even think about. Like your temperature. Now, sometimes you do. You think, oh, I should put a coat on, or if you're watching a movie or something and it gets chilly and you wrap a blanket around you, you're doing something um, that actually is helping out your body. But your, like your blood, your blood is supposed to be slightly alkaline, it's supposed to be a little bit base. Um, and we mostly eat acids though, because bases taste bitter and there are very few things that we like that actually we'd say, oh, that's bitter, that's really good. Those don't really go together. We like things that are kind of tart, tangy, sour. Acids are sour, bases are bitter, but our blood needs to be a little bit on the basic side. So if you eat some piece of candy and it has an acid in it, your body has to adjust that to uh, remain homeostatic and it does it without you even thinking about it or even knowing about it but if you drink um, any kind of a soft drink or um, let's see if I can get this better here I don't know um, they're all tangy so we've got to somehow get rid of that acid now we do it through food 
and um, we, everything that you are, you ate. So the old adage where you are what you ate is actually true. There isn't anything, you are only made out of everything that you eat. So mom is right that you gotta be careful what you put in, just like uh, Nihilus builders, you don't want them to build a house using only styrofoam and scotch tape and, and uh, stuff like that, because that's not good enough to build a house. It's not gonna be strong enough. Same thing if you're trying to build you just with chips and uh, energy drinks and <laughs> coffee and uh, whatever else, ice cream. I like ice cream. Um, well, that's good for you. That's good for you. <laughs> uh, but you, you do have to. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't have any of those. But you do need to have some of the stuff that actually is better building material because everything that you are gets built out of those. The ultimate source of energy for everything on the earth except for one domain, where we're gonna talk about how we do that. Uh, there's one domain that doesn't get its energy from the sun. It's a bacteria-like, it used to be a bacteria, now they classify it different because of this one difference. It lives on the mid-oceanic trenches down where no sunlight filters through, so it has to get its energy from somewhere else. But you will probably, unless you take biology in uh, college, uh, never have to worry about archaea again after this, and you won't see it, whatever. I'll show you a picture of it magnified. You don't have to worry about everything else that you come in contact will get its energy from the sun. You can trace all of it back to, we'll, we'll see some food webs here coming up. All of it comes from the sun. And we recycle everything else except for energy. All of the water, go ahead and take a drink of water out of that water that you've had. It has been used before. You were not the first person to drink that water. Uh, it has all been, re it just gets recycled. We only have now you can't eat or drink anymore. We pretty much got you taken care of, Kaylee. Right. <laughs> um, this was the whole goal. Hang on. We need a center. I don't want that again. Well, she, 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 no. willpower is not really that big a thing. She's going to go ahead and eat and drink anyway. It doesn't matter. All, um, all my willpower is not going to eat or drink anything. Um, the rest of what's going to be my short life. <laughs> hey, was that short time? Um, no. But we are going to, all of the energy all comes back to the sun. Everything else we just recycle. Everything that you've eaten, that you're going to eat, has probably been eaten before. It just recycles, recycles, and it's broken completely down, so it's not in any way the same form or anything. But everything cycles except for energy. That's why we need the sun. The dinosaurs, what happened to the dinosaurs? The hypothesis is that an asteroid hit the earth, put up a big cloud of dust, blocked the sun for a while, killed a bunch of the plants, and so the dinosaurs were very dependent on those plants, um, so they didn't make it. They had to have some way that the sun, the energy got turned off the sun. Obviously the sun didn't get turned off, but something blocked between there. Now there's some other reasons that they think there is a layer about the same place as a lot of the dinosaur bones that have elements that <clears throat> would link it to um, uh, meteorites. So they think that that might be, they think, I don't know uh, what, it, what it was, but that's one of the reasons, and that could kill off a lot of the different species because it turns the sun off, and that's the source of energy. It does beg the question, how did anything else survive? I don't know. I wasn't there. All right, so there's a fish hawk acquiring some food by taking a part. Anybody know what kind of fish that is? Well, I can't tell any salmon. Dead. <laughs> it's dead. It is dead. No, it's a perch. Now we we have oh, perch around here, but that uh, but the yellow and yeah, this is not this is a yellow perch. Um, 
it's tearing that apart and uh, that would make great bait. My son and I went fishing, we ran out of bait. That would have made great bait right there. And on the bottom, as uh, something that I enjoy now, when I was a kid, that's two trailers full of tomatoes. I was not crazy about tomatoes and I came to like them. I, I, it is, I would love a great BLT uh, right now. Um, when I was a kid, I was pretty good with just the BL. I just I could do without the, the T part of it, but I wonder what this smells like. Because if you've ever, if you have a garden, if you even just have a, a container, you have a, a tomato in it, if you're picking them, if you're picking something out of them, trying to get bugs out, if you touch tomato plants, you know that you have because it gives off an aroma, kind of a very strong. So if you're driving a machine through it, that would have to be, and then all of these, and I wonder how does it get the tomatoes off and get them in here without bruising them off? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. But that is a lot of, that is a lot of tomatoes. All right. Living things also respond. We call this irritability. That's not irritability like when you keep asking mom the same thing over and over, just hoping that she finally gets tired and says yes instead of no. That's a different type of irritable. Irritability just means they can respond. Um, the way that it could be positive, negative stimuli that they have. Mom and dad will try and get you to do something by saying if you do this, you know, then we will get done early and we can go do this. Well, that's a good thing, so you want to do it. Or you do this or else there's some kind of consequence for my dog. If he tries to run down the driveway too far, he hears a little tone from his collar and if he keeps going he gets another stimulus that will get him to turn around and come back it'll shock him just a little bit and he runs back into the yard um, so living things can respond not everything is as mobile as we are as as my dog is um, yep so um, some things like plants when it gets really hot and it's been dry, they have little openings on the bottom, stomata, a bunch of them are stoma, um, and they're open to let oxygen come out, carbon dioxide come in, but if it gets really hot and dry, they close up, because otherwise the plant would just dry out. They would lose all of their moisture, so that is a response to a stimulus. The temperature, the humidity makes it close. Not, not anything that we could see. It's not like the tree moves or shakes or anything as all those little doors are closing on the bottoms of the leaf, but it does, it is irritable. Um, most of the time there is some motion that can, that can um, be part of the stimulus. An animal is thirsty, it goes to the water hole, which is where the cameras are because all the interesting stuff happens at the water hole. Um, living things reproduce and develop. This is one of the reasons that, for example, the virus, COVID-19, some people don't think that it is alive because it cannot reproduce. Now you say, oh, it seems to be growing and reproducing fine, but it can't on its own. It has DNA, but it can't, um, it can't make its own copies. And that's actually why it's called the coronavirus it's one of many coronaviruses but if this is a hopefully this works we'll wait for it to see how it did if that's um a regular cell and it's got its nucleus and dna and it's doing whatever a cell is supposed to do we'll talk about that coming up but this virus which looks like and i know i'm in your way a bunch of alien landers here and they actually have little feet that attach to it and if you picture that going all the way around 
It looks like the outer part of the sun, the corona of the sun. The sun itself is a pretty much a perfect sphere, but what we see is that haze around there. They're not flames, they're flares. They can't have fire on the sun, there's no oxygen. Um, but that's the corona. So since this surrounds it and looks kind of like the corona of the sun, it's called a coronavirus. But the virus takes and it puts its DNA, it drills a little hole into the cell membrane and it dumps its DNA in, goes to the nucleus of this cell and this cell, it takes over that nucleus and now suddenly that whole cell, rather than making the proteins it wants, it just makes more copies of the virus. So the virus can reproduce, but not on its own. It has to have a host cell for it to reproduce. And it has to find the right cell. Um, unfortunately, this particular COVID-19 seems to be not very picky in it. It likes almost any cell in the respiratory system that it can, it can find. Um, that's why we're trying to be cautious. But hopefully if we get rid of it, then we're, we're done with it. That is us. All right. But in populist, that's... I, that's I did. Like no, but we'll start Wednesday. We will start right here. This is the exact same screen that the other class got to. Woo